Well, my research is converting plant materials into fuels and chemicals. These are non-food plant materials, grasses, straws, and wood chips, and so forth. We're trying to make substitutes for petroleum, replacements for petroleum out of uh, grasses and straws. We call it grassoline. Well, the, of course, the, the drop in petroleum prices now that bounce back up is uh, undermined to some degree that progress. But uh, I think the underlying trends uh, are, remain in place. In fact, the, the head of BP said the future has been delayed or deferred, not replaced. <laughs> you know that uh, we all know that we're using oil an awful lot faster than we're uh, than we're discovering it, and there's all the environmental and other issues connected with it. So uh, I think the bioeconomy bio is on track. I don't think there's any real fundamental change there, uh, but and perhaps the uh, kind of bubble that we went through also teaches people what some of the dangers that we have for relying so much on petroleum. Well, I think that's one thing for really important for people to realize. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen out there that are pitching single answer solutions to a problem that needs a whole lot of answers. You know, the so-called so silver bullet idea, we don't have any silver bullets, we need silver buckshot or silver silver shrapnel. And so we need all the rena renewable sustainable electricity we can get, we need all the renewable sustainable liquid fuels we can get, we need to conserve, we need better cars, we need all those things to get us past this crunch uh, that we're looking at or into a a future where we have a more secure, more stable transportation system that doesn't build up greenhouse gases. Well, this, this is the, actually the fifth university I've been at during my career. MSU has by far the smallest barriers to, uh, to getting collaborations done. It's very easy. Basically, find out who you want to work with. You walk over and talk to him or her, and if you hit it off, the things with it, it just happens, you know. Uh, but there's no, there's no administration in the way. <laughs> Thank you very much, administration. <laughs> Well, uh, the college has always been strong in energy research, and uh, I think the, the fact that we have the, the Great Lakes Bioenergy Research Center and this new center that Don Morelli has just is a testament to that, our, our capabilities. So uh, more than any other place that I know of, um, we're able to do the, the kind of the breadth of the fuels, the battery electric vehicles. They're really working on a cutting edge stuff there in terms of those, uh, those battery electric vehicles. And we think we're doing cutting edge work in biofuels. So it's a very exciting place to work. It's a fun, uh, really stimulating environment. We have got to solve our, our fuel problem, our energy problem. This is going to be really a defining challenge for us for the next few decades. People shouldn't expect quick, easy solutions. We're going to have a lot of pain, <laughs> sorry, between, between now and when we get out of this because we've been you know, used to having really cheap, uh, no consequences, fossil fuels. Well, they aren't so cheap anymore and we're figuring out all the consequences they've got. We've got to figure out a way to provide energy for ourselves and for the rest of the world that won't pollute, that's sustainable, doesn't bankrupt you, and doesn't uh, undermine national security. We can do it. We will do it. But it's not going to happen.